Hi, and welcome to Module 1, Section 7. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about compound, uh, continuous compounding. The compounding we've done previously uh, up until now has been discrete compounding, where we look at um, some, some period of time we're compounding over, maybe it's quarters or months or something like that. And now this continuous compounding is going to be a, a, a limiting process uh, of the discrete compounding. So we're going to compound more and more frequently until we, we compound continuously. Okay, so you'll see that in the, in, in the slides that are to come. Okay, so with con continuous compounding, I'm going to start off by stating the formula that I'm sure you've seen before, uh, the cap A equals cap P times E to the RT, and, and uh, again, uh, time is measured in years when you see this formula. We actuaries don't use the R as the, uh, uh, the rate, uh, the continuous compound rate. We use something called a delta. We use the lowercase Greek letter delta. And so uh, substituting that in for R and substituting a 1 for cap P will get the accumulation function uh, for continuous compounding is E raised to the delta T, where delta is that continuously compounded interest rate, and time is measured in years. Okay, uh, for us, what we call delta is the force of interest. I put in the word constant here. It's technically it is a constant, uh, and I'll come. We'll talk about general cases later on in another uh, in another video. But for right now, the delta is a uh, is a constant. But you won't see the word generally. You won't see the word constant, but it is a constant uh, force of interest. Okay, so for now, uh, now I want to move on and, and look at deriving the uh, the expression e to the delta t that that uh, the expression that, that defines the accumula accumulation function, A of t, and we're going to derive it via a limiting process. So let's start with a discrete compound interest uh, situation, and if we're discrete compounding, then the accumulation function is 1 plus i raised to the t power, where i is the periodic effective interest rate, and t is the number of periods. Let's start with the periodic effective interest rate. We could get that from the nominal rate compounded m times a year by, uh, by this expression, we take I upper M and divide it by M, where I upper M is the nominal, it's, it is an annual rate, you won't see that normally, but it's a nominal annual rate, uh, interest rate compounded M times per year. And so I'm just going to replace the, uh, the I in the expression 1 plus I to the T by the I upper M over M, and, and I get this. Now T is, is the number of periods. Uh, now, you know, the, the above, you can see I'm, I'm wanting to measure time in years, but right now I have T measured in, in the number of periods. So I have M periods per year. And so I would like to rescale uh, the time so that it's measured in years, and I'll do that by replacing the T in the exponent there by an M times T. Now T is measured in years. Let me give you an, a, a specific example just to kind of illustrate that. Let's say that M is 4, so I'm compounding quarterly then I would replace the, uh, if I have a T in the exponent, just a T by itself, then I'm measuring the number of quarters. But if I have a 4 times T, then T is being measured in the number of years. For instance, if I had a T equal 1, then when I plug it into this expression, 4 times 1 is 4, and that corresponds to 4 quarters. Uh, the exponent should be a 4 if I'm measuring, uh, if, I'm, if I'm trying to look at the accumulation after one year, uh, the exponent should be a 4, and it is if I plug in a T equal 1. On the other hand, if I just wanted to accumulate for one quarter, then uh, the exponent should be a 1. Well, the t value, if I'm accumulating for one quarter and t is measured in years, then the t value would be 1 fourth. And of course, 4 times 1 fourth is that 1 in the, in the exponent that I'm trying to, or that, that, I would, um, uh, that I would like to have. Okay, and so hopefully I've convinced you that uh, it, when, I, when I switch to years, changing t to be measured in years, then the exponent changes from a t to an m times t. So now I want to allow m to increase without bound. That's what compounding more and more frequently would, would mean. m is the number of compounding periods per year, so I want m to get bigger and bigger and bigger with, without bound. The first step that I want to do is, is to uh, consider, well, what happens to i upper m as m goes to infinity? Well, that's just some number that I'm going to call delta and it's actually the same delta that I've already used, and it's thought of as the continuously compounded interest rate. So again, I upper M is the nominal annual rate 
compounded m times per year. So if you plug in an infinity, you're compounding continuously, and that's what we're going to call delta. Uh, you can think of delta as the continuously compounded interest rate. So at this point, I'm just going to replace the I upper m by a delta in the expression that's defining the AFT, and I get, I, I get 1 plus delta over m raised to the m times t. Now there's a fact from calculus that we're going to use, uh, and, and it's this, that if you look at the expression 1 plus delta over m raised to the m power as m gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you see delta over m gets closer and closer and closer to zero. One plus that then is approaching one from, from the right, but then, so you're taking numbers that are getting closer to one, closer and closer to one, and you're raising them to higher and higher powers, and it's not clear what that, uh, you know, it was not clear if that actually um, approaches a single value or not, but from calculus we know it does approach a single value when you take numbers that are getting closer and closer and closer to one and you raise them to higher and higher and higher powers in this way. It's not always, but in this particular manner, it, it, when that process is done in this way that, that's shown on the left-hand side or, or just after the word fact, then um, that limit will, will be equal to e to the delta. And so on the uh, expression that's defining a of t, I have uh, an, an exponent of m times t. So I'm going to think of that as 1 plus delta over m raised to the m, and then that raised to the t. And as, as m goes to infinity, what's in brackets converges to an e to the delta, and so the whole thing converges to an e to the delta times t. And so then I could replace then uh, the, or the, the fact now is that um, you know, adding an exponent, uh, adding a t in, in both sides on the exponent there, I get this. And then uh, that, that does it. We've, we've got it then. Now, as m goes to infinity, as we compound more and more and more frequently, then the accumulation function um, in the limit, the accumulation function would just be e to the uh, delta times t. Again, t being measured in years. So let me clean, it, clean up the, uh, the slide a little bit. I've got delta being the constant. Uh, again, constant won't normally be said. Delta being the force of interest, then A of t is going to be uh, e to the delta times t. Now I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, V notation. Can we use V notation in this situation? Remember, we can use V notation as the periodic accumulation factor from uh, the one year or, or one period uh, from time k to k plus one is, is uh it doesn't depend on k. Now in this case, I have the periodic accumulation factor, but I actually know what the period is because I'm measuring the time in years. So this would actually be the annual accumulation factor uh, from k to k plus one. And I know from before that this is the ratio of uh, the accumu accumulation function at time k plus one to the accumulation function at time k. Uh, plug in the k plus one and the k for t and the accumulation function, and I get uh, I get this ratio of exponentials in the numerator. I can use properties of exponents to rewrite the numerator uh, as an e to the delta k times an e to the delta. The e to the delta k is going to cancel with that uh, same factor in the denominator, and I'm going to be left with just an e to the delta. That doesn't have a k in it at all. In other words, this is independent of which year you know, that you're accumulating. And so this is just going to be called the annual accumulation factor. I can use V notation. And in fact, the V, val the v value would be an E to the minus delta. That would be the annual, uh, the annual discount uh, factor. So anytime you're compounding, whether you're compounding interest or compounding uh, uh, discount in the discrete framework or now here in the continuous framework, compounding is when we use uh, V notation. And so uh, this is what I have now that the, accumula the uh, accumulation function is e to the delta t. Uh, the uh, annual discount factor is e to the minus delta. That's our v. And the annual accumulation factor is the reciprocal of v. It's e to the uh, delta. Okay, now I've seen this terminology before on an exam and in, in, in uh, other uh, situations, and it's been confusing to students. They use this term force of discount. So let's think about what it means to force of discount. I went through this whole process the last, you know, eight or nine or ten minutes talking about uh, interest, uh, you know, an, an interest scenario. What if we were in a discount scenario instead? Well, let's look at the difference between interest and discount on a timeline. Uh, remember that interest is paid at the end of the period and discount is paid at the beginning of the period. And so what is continuous compounding? Well, it's taking compounding more and more frequently, which means the length of the period between the 
beginning of the period and the end of the period get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller in the limit, then it's actually the same, you know, you don't, there's no difference between the beginning of the period and the end of the period in the limit. And so uh, my, my point here is that the force of discount is exactly the same as, as the force of interest. So that's kind of a, a geometric way of showing you that those two things are the same. Let me go through an algebraic uh, and kind of a calculus um, reason also. Remember a couple of slides ago, we said that e to the delta t is the limit as m goes to infinity of, the, uh, of that expression, one plus delta over m to the m times t, and delta was thought of as the continuously compounded interest rate. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, that there's another fact that, uh, you know, why the, the expression I'm taking the limit of here, what, that's a compound interest the discrete compound interest accumulation function. So what if I took a discrete compound discount accumulation function? It would look something like this, where delta is the, uh, uh, the d upper infinity, the rate of discount compounded continuously. And so the fact is that those two are going to be the, the you're still going to get the e to the delta t when you take the limit as m goes to infinity and you're using the uh, uh, discrete compound discount accumulation function. Uh, that's the expression that I'm taking the limit of there. So, you, so you're going to get the same whether you're compounding interest or discount. And so the point here, my final comment here, is that uh, delta, when you see a delta, it's the force of interest, or it could be called the force of discount. It doesn't matter. When you see that delta, the accumulation function is going to be uh, A of T equals E to the delta T, where T is measured in years. The, the uh, ADF, the uh, annual discount factor, is E to the minus minus delta, that's our V notation, and the annual accumulation factor is V to the minus one or E to the, uh, e to the delta. Okay, so uh, that does it for uh, continuous compounding. I uh, will see you in the next video.